I'm delivery guy. And I'd like to teach you how to drive for Uber Eats because honestly, I think that Uber Eats is the best delivery platform available. You're gonna need a hot bag. At some point, you're gonna have to break down and get yourself a hot bag because Uber Eats doesn't provide one for free. Grubhub does, DoorDash does. So if you wanna sign up for those apps, they're gonna send you one in the mail for free. But Uber Eats, they're cheap. Why do you need a delivery bag anyway? First, let's start from the customer's point of view. If I'm a customer and I get my food cold, I might take away the tip from the delivery driver. Customers are allowed to take your tip up to an hour after the delivery. All right, number two, let's take it from the perspective of the employee at a restaurant. You got a long line trying to make orders. You're trying to please customers. You see some guy walk in in the back and he's looking at his phone. He doesn't make eye contact with you. He's just another customer, right? No, he's some dumbass DoorDash kid that doesn't know how to carry his hot bag. He doesn't know how to announce himself, and he's just going to wait in the back of the line like a chump. When you walk into a restaurant, you want to be recognized as a delivery driver by the customers and by the employees. So let's walk into that restaurant confidently with our hot bag at our side and display that we are here to do a job. Reason number three, when I'm stepping onto some stranger's property, I want to be identified as that delivery driver. I might even be at the wrong house. I might be at the wrong address. I want people to know that I'm a delivery driver. And when they see the hot bag, they know that I'm there for business. And I hurry up, I drop off that order, and I get out of there. So do you need to schedule when driving for Uber Eats? No. I never schedule on Uber Eats. In fact, I never even have looked at the scheduling. I just go online when I'm ready, and I go offline when I'm done. Do you need to accept every order? Oh, hell no. No, Uber Eats doesn't care. You can decline every order. Every order. It doesn't matter. If I was you, I would only take orders that make sense. And I've taken orders that I've regretted. I've been tip baited and everything else. So let me tell you, just be calm and evaluate the order. Use some basic principles to judge the orders that you get so that you can know whether you're wasting your time or not. Let's keep in mind that we want to complete orders as quick as possible. Let's keep in mind that we're using our vehicles and putting mileage on our cars and eventually we'll have to repair them. The ideal way to measure these orders that are incoming on any food delivery or any delivery app is the dollar per mile ratio. You're gonna hear plenty of people talk about the dollar per mile ratio on YouTube. And basically what we're doing is we're measuring the dollars that we're being paid against the miles that we have to drive. Now an example would be a $1 per one mile ratio. I never take $1 for one mile orders. Never, never. I'd say probably 99% of the time I will say no. Most of the time I wanna see $2 per mile or $1.50 per mile, that is the ideal ratio. And, and of course, anything better than that, trip radar. If you've ever seen trip radar, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll see an order and it will have like a little eye symbol and it will say a number, which means how many drivers are looking at this order right now. They're showing this order to multiple drivers. Don't feel pressured by this. Don't feel pressured. If you see an order on trip radar, it probably isn't a very desirable order and that's why they're showing it to everybody. Just be calm, evaluate that dollar per mile ratio. If it's better than $1 per one mile, then yeah, I'd probably take it. Don't let the app take you out of your delivery zone. What is your delivery zone? Your delivery zone is the area on the map that you are willing to drive. Anywhere that you are not willing to drive is not your delivery zone. Keep in mind that you wanna be near restaurants or other businesses that get orders for Uber Eats. Uber Eats has shop and deliver orders at Safeways, Walgreens, and Rite Aid. So if near a drugstore or a grocery store, you might get some orders. Another thing is, is you wanna complete an order and pick up an order as soon as possible. So if you're getting an order that's taking you far away from restaurants, far away from businesses, it's probably not gonna be worth it unless it's paying you something like 25 to $30. Be sure to have the most recent version of the app. A recent update now shows what businesses currently have orders on the map. All right, so I'm gonna show you a screenshot of an order. Up in the top corner, you're gonna see a circle with an X. That means decline. You can hit that as many times as you want. They don't care about acceptance rate, especially on Uber Eats. Before you go out, you should have in mind what your minimum order would be. 
For me, my minimum order is $8. It used to be $6, but I've stepped it up. Now my minimum order is $8. And my ideal mileage for that order should be four miles or less. All right, and now we wanna have an ideal mileage, but we wanna have also a mileage limitation. Now, how many miles are we willing to go away from home? When I'm driving food delivery, most of the restaurants and businesses are within a 10 mile radius. So, you know, anything more than eight miles, I really don't like to take these orders. Unless of course they pay something like 30 or $45. All right guys, so I wanna take a delivery. I wanna accept a delivery so that we could actually pick up an order and you guys could see how it goes down. We're actually going to take this order, even though $5 is below my $8 minimum, just so that we can pick up an order and we can show you guys what it's like to do a delivery. The reason why I accepted this order is because it's only 2.2 miles. So the dollar per mile ratio is more than $2 a mile. And I'm sitting in the parking lot for that restaurant right now. We're actually sitting at a Subway and a Little Caesars, a teriyaki restaurant and a Chinese food restaurant. There's also a Pizza Hut here. So this area would be what you would call a hot spot. So let's run in here and pick up this teriyaki. All right, so when I went into the restaurant, I looked through the app and I was able to check the order and see if it had any drinks that were included with it. Picking up an Uber Eats order. Thank you. Yeah. You can also check on the receipt and the customer's name, they'll have their first name with their last initial and there'll be an order number. So you can match up the name with the order number to make sure that you got the right order. All right, now that we got our order, we can proceed with the delivery. One recent update with Uber Eats now shows you when your ETA is and it wasn't like this before. So when I was multi-apping, I used to always wonder, when am I supposed to be there? I don't know. <laughs> now it lets you know when you're supposed to be there. So we're just letting the GPS do the work for us at this point. We got six minutes until the customer drop off. It's about 2.3 miles. So I think the app lied a little bit, but that's okay. Two and a half miles for $5 is fair. Now apartments could be a nightmare for a delivery driver. So customer notes sometimes can save you. Check out the customer notes when you're on your way to the delivery address. And also be aware that the GPS at apartment complexes will not always take you to the proper building. So when you're entering an apartment complex, you wanna be looking at the apartment number, you wanna be looking at the building number or letter, you wanna be looking at the building address so that you can find your way to the proper spot. You won't be doing laps around apartment complexes because the GPS said to drive to the front when it was really in the back. First thing that I do is I will take a picture of the address number, whether it be on a trash can, on a mailbox, on the building itself. I take my own photo so that I can prove that I was at the right residence. Then I take a picture for the app and I screenshot that picture so that I have the screenshot as record that I took a picture for the app. Sometimes the internet's so bad that you drive away and it never uploaded the picture anyway. So it, it's good to save these records for at least three days, just in case a customer says that you didn't drop off their food and tries to get you in trouble. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and subscribe for more content like this. I'll be coming out with new videos every week. I took a picture of the house number. It was located on the trash can. It was also located on the house. So when taking a picture for Uber Eats, try to take a picture with as much in the picture as possible so that there's information to identify the building. Uh, with this drop off specifically, the, the front door was on a weird spot on the side of the house, away from the door number. So I was gonna have to run into the street to take that picture. So I just took some additional footage. So if for some reason the customer comes outside and tries to take the order from you, 
just take a picture of their mailbox or somewhere where the address is to prove to the company that you were at the right place and put a note in the app that says was handed to customer. Honestly, I didn't do a very good job of it myself on this order, but when you're taking a picture for Uber Eats, you're gonna wanna try to get as much of the house as possible, and if you can, get the address in the picture. So that way, the customer and the company knows that you were at the right place. So if for some reason you need to unassign an order, maybe you accepted the an order that you don't like, maybe you realize that this order was going way too far out of town, it's okay to unassign orders, just don't do it too much. They really don't mind you unassigning the occasional order, but once you start unassigning a lot of orders, you might get in trouble. So just keep that in mind. So if you scroll to the bottom of the app when you have an order, you're gonna see like an exclamation point with a triangle. That's how you unassign. You're gonna, you're gonna hit that triangle. You're gonna say something like, I can't do this order for some reason. You unassign the order. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you already have picked up the food. I wouldn't recommend that because that makes you look like you're a fraud, like you're just trying to cancel orders so that you could get a free meal. I would only unassign the order if you haven't picked up the order yet. One annoying fact about Uber Eats is that they will try to send you an order right as you're dropping off. They will put an order right in your screen and it will block everything. You won't be able to do anything. And so you may have to pull over to the side of the road and you may have to evaluate this order. Just be calm and evaluate it like you do all the other orders. Just take note of the dollar per mile ratio and where this order is going. And by the way, if for some reason Uber Eats hides the fact of how much this order is paying you or hides the fact of where this order is actually going, I wouldn't even accept it unless you're in the mood for a mystery. There's a reason why they're hiding that information. And the reason is, is because no one else wants this order. They're thinking that they're gonna have to trick you just to take it. Uh, I have taken weird orders like this occasionally and they really weren't that bad. But other times I took an order where it didn't tell me where I was going and I got really mad. So just be careful with orders when they don't give you the full story. One of the most annoying things is that customer tips don't show up for a little more than an hour after the delivery is completed. So you're not really gonna be able to add up how much money you've made at the end of the night until about an hour and a half later. One way around this is at the end of the night, I could go into the app, I could take a look at the earnings and I could see how much the trip was estimated to pay out. And then I just add up those estimations and that's how I get a rough number of what I should be getting at the end of the night. Occasionally, Customers do take away the tips, but it's pretty rare. As long as you got good customer service, you're really fast about dropping off deliveries and use your hot bag, you shouldn't have much of a problem with this on Uber Eats. So if you're just starting out in food delivery, just stick to one app and try to understand that app and get to know that app. But when you start to get a good feel for an app, I want you to apply for as many driving apps as possible because if you're really trying to maximize your dollar per hour rate, you're gonna to wanna to have access to many apps. Let's say Grubhub, DoorDash, and Uber Eats all on your phone, and maybe Uber Eats is slow like it is right now. I'll turn on DoorDash and Grubhub just to see what's available, and I'll take the best order. This is called the multi-app strategy, and it really is an advanced method, so I wouldn't advise trying to do multi-apping until you're prepared for it.